fire ready. <laughs> All right, it's President's Day, and look, the guy looks like the first president. It's your birthday he, he today, should. right? Indeed. Well, actually, February 22nd. Okay, so so President's Day is always held on the third Monday of, of February, but it was in honor of George Washington's birthday on the 22nd. And Lincoln's, too. Yeah, it's a two-fold. And now we, honor, now we honor all the presidents, past and present. Uh, John Koopman III has been, uh, now, do you call it a reenactor? How would you depict what well, you do? It could be impersonator, interpreter. Uh, just basically, I perform as George Washington at historic sites and also in documentaries and film. And you You're have one of the most realistic costumes out there. Why is that? How do you know? Well, because I have a friend of mine that was the tailor uh, for the uh, George Washington, well, the Mount Vernon Museum, and they did a very accurate uh, recreation of his uniform, and I benefited from the fact that he was on that project, so I was able to get the exact same uniform that's on display at Mount Vernon. And you're built like him, too. Yeah, some of the exact same dimensions by some strange quirk of genetics. <laughs> Wow. Well, that's fantastic. Oh, all right. So tell us, we, we know you've written a great book, uh, George Washington at War, 1776. What else do you do to uh, bring more knowledge about George Washington to the American public? Well, one of the things I like to do is uh, I own my own horse, and uh, I try to have him portray Nelson. He's mm -hmm. one of the um, unsung heroes of the Revolution. Of course. He was unlike the white horse shown on the cover of my book. He was a chestnut. And unfortunately, people don't know anything about him. Everybody knows that maybe Robert E. Lee's horse was Traveler and so forth, but nobody seems to know that George Washington's favorite war horse was Nelson. So I make a big deal about him in my book. And what, well, what are some of the other myths that, that you can debunk for us? Like, for example, George Washington having all wooden teeth. It's not true, right? It's not true. Uh, Mount Vernon has been researching, trying to find out where that myth came from. They can't even find out the source of it. But he did have uh, false teeth uh, dentures, but they were carved uh, from ivory. The other one is is, is the wig. Everyone's convinced that he wore a wig. It's not true. He had his, his actual hair throughout his life, but he would powder it and curl it so it looked like uh, it was a wig. But uh, that's why I grew my hair long, to be a, a good interpreter. Mm-hmm. Uh, chop down a cherry tree? No, there again, why would a good farmer chop down a perfectly good fruit bearing because tree? Because he was, he, was, he was in a, a mood. He, something gone haywire with that. No, oh, there. The only origin of that is the uh, Parson Weems, and unfortunately, he's not seen as being very reliable. He didn't. Maybe if he had put down his footnotes, people would believe it, but he didn't record any footnotes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Throwing a dollar of the Potomac? Nobody did throw a rock across the Rappahannock. There again, why would he waste money by throwing it away? He was always very, very frugal with money. And the Potomac is very wide, but the Rappahannock is relatively narrow in spots, so that's that's plausible. Right. It's more realistic and. They had college baseball players trying to replicate it. They actually had a hard time replicating the feat. I'm what, bad. What were some of the leadership traits that he had that were so unique to him? Well, believe it or not, uh, the fact that he didn't say much. Because very often in politics, uh, people say something, they have to retract it. Mm -hmm. But he would be very careful in what he said, and that way he was less likely to make a mistake. Well, he but, famously said, I cannot tell a lie, so if he's not saying much, odds are that he's not telling a lie. <laughs> Well, except in, in Brian's book on uh, Washington Secret Six, he, he was a very good liar when he came to spying because he had to do it. Mm. To National save security. The army. Yes. Yeah. So he did lie in that case. So today is President's Day, uh, George Washington's birthday. How are you celebrating, aside from being on TV with us? Well, as soon as we're done here, I'll be getting in my truck and heading off back to Newburgh, New York at Washington's headquarters. It's a three-day event there celebrating uh, Washington's birthday. Fantastic. Great. All right. John, thank you very much. Thanks well, thank you all for having me. Real pleasure. Fabulous. Enjoy it. Thank you. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everybody.